How's it going, guys? 4.27 a.m., 17th February, Friday, here in Japan. We have a past level question for acid base for step one. Before we get started, please subscribe to my channel. Really appreciate it. Give it a like. Really appreciate it. Find me on Instagram at nomen underscore medical, M-E-H-L-M-A-N underscore medical. Links down below. Find me on Telegram. Links to the Telegram group or channel. I'm down below. And I start the clip. 61-year-old man. He has smoked two packs of cigarettes daily for 40 years. Cardiopulmonary exam shows a loud P2 and a long, narrow cardiac silhouette. Question wants to know what's most likely to be seen in this patient. Now, as I've inculcated in many of my prior clips, a loud P2, aka loud pulmonic component of S2, sometimes the US simile can just say loud S2, there's no such thing as a loud A2 on US simile, means pulmonary hypertension. Okay, so pulmonary hypertension slash core pulmonale, that's how you interpret this. Long cardiac silhouette, that's one of the ways the US simile will tell you the patient is COPD. They can also write the point of maximal impulse is palpated in the sub xiphoid space, which is in the midline, the median. If a patient has left ventricular hypertrophy in contrast, then the, you'll have a lateralized apex beat point of maximal impulse in the anterior auxiliary axillary line. So we have COPD here causing pulmonary hypertension. There's no core pulmonale yet. There's no overt decompensation of the right heart. If we added JVD in the vignette or peripheral edema, we could then say there's core pulmonale, which is defined as right heart failure due to a pulmonary cause. So COPD, let's whip through the answer choices here. What's most likely to be seen? Choice A, decreased chloride and plasma, wrong fucking answer. Nonsense answer choice. Through this in here as a distractor to be an overt asshole, okay? I could make a quick point that you should know there is, and this is going to sound really weird, but it's on the NBME exam that there is increased chloride in the plasma in patients who have intraerythrocytic decreased activity of carbonic anhydrase. It's a long fucking discussion. Don't want to go down that route right now. Point is, wrong fucking answer. Choice B, decreased dissolved CO2 in plasma, wrong answer. In, it's going to be increased, not decreased. So in COPD, chronic CO2 retainers, blue bloater, so that's your chronic bronchitis component, pink, pump, pink puffer emphysema. But chronic CO2 retention is what patients with COPD have. Okay, so the chronic bronchitis increased mucus pre prevents gas exchange. And the emphysema decreased alveolar surface area, decreased capillary surface area in turn. So decreased gas exchange, CO2 retention in these patients. So they're going to have a chronic respiratory acidosis. Let's keep moving through. Should I see decreased urinary weak base? A very nebulous sounding answer choice refers to decreased urinary bicarbonate is the correct answer. And the reason we know urinary bicarbonate is decreased is because the kidney is retaining it because we want increased serum bicarbonate to compensate for the chronic CO2 retention. So another way of saying chronic respiratory acidosis is just saying that you have uh, respiratory acidosis with increased bicarbonate. I mean, that's what we have here. Bicarb's basic, so we want to retain it. So just real quick, choice D, increase serum pH, clearly wrong fucking answer. As I just said, we're chronic CO2 retainers, chronic respiratory acidosis. We'd have decreased pH of anything where we could compensate back into the normal range. And finally, increased urinary volume, nonsense answer choice. I mean, hyperfiltration in the setting of diabetes where increased glucose crosses Bowman capsule, polyuria. Wrong fucking answer. You know the deal. I'm going to make more content if you like my stuff. Subscribe to my channel. And I appreciate your time. That's it.